Uh, this is an attempt to find out what happened with the over-policing, the gross overreaction uh, of the New South Wales Police <laughs> to the Nigel Farage speaking event in Sydney at Dalton House at Piermont on Tuesday the 27th of September. Uh, it's a truism these days, if you want to find out who's protesting about what, it'll all be uh, writ large over social media. There'll be plenty of pointers to what's going on as they organise on the various social media forums. And uh, for this event, uh, there wasn't a murmur. Uh, the Farage team assures me that they look through all the social media. They're very experienced in this around the world, where protesters might turn up. And there wasn't a single word on Sydney or Australian social media about organising any sort of protest against the um, um, d distinguished uh, former member of the European Parliament, the hero of Brexit, Nigel Farage, who is a moderate, sensible, um, mainstream speaker on a range of issues, who has a lot of support in his country, a lot of support in Australia. So why was there the need for the New South Wales Police to totally overreact by bringing dozens of officers around, down to surround Dalton House and have the riot squad, no less than the riot squad, parked in the side street in case there was some action. And on top of that, to charge the organisers $3,000 for police protection against an invisible protest. Uh, this was a bizarre use of policing resources. And whether or not you're a fan of Nigel Farage or an opponent, we should all be concerned about the waste of police resources in this instance. Because if there was no sign of any protest, there's no uh, word on social media about it, wouldn't it be better for the um, uh, scores of police officers to be mobilised for real policing out in the suburbs? Uh, Drive-by shootings, uh, the drug trade, uh, protecting <coughs> neighbourhoods and households. That's what they should have been doing that evening instead of uh, over-policing a non-existent protest. So the question needs to be asked, why were the Farage organisers charged the $3,000? Why were the taxpayers of New South Wales made to fork out far greater amounts of money for the extra police, uh, particularly the riot police who were mobilised on standby that evening? And what was the security advice that uh, caused this overreaction? This is what the SO52 seeks to uh, elicit to find out what security advice and decision making there was in the lead up to the event and all the documents relating to the deployment of the various police officers at the event. The officers themselves were doing what they're told, but somewhere in the police hierarchy, uh, there are questions that need to be answered. Um, what was the security advice? What was it based on? Um, if there was uh, no protest that, that was ever organised and none foreshadowed on social media, uh, what uh, shadows were the police hierarchy jumping at in, in undertaking this extraordinary um, um, police protection that was completely unnecessary, squandering scarce resources in New South Wales at the expense of the taxpayer. So the SA52 in that regard is straightforward. It'll be fascinating to see what it shows and the government again needs to be made accountable. The Minister. Uh, and the Honourable Mark Lakeman will get the relevant documents, but we're very happy to provide you a sneak peek here today because there is nothing to see here, Mr Deputy President. It's well established that there are times when police are required to provide public policing services that go beyond their general responsibilities to the community. These include, but are not limited to, special events such as vehicle and pedestrian traffic management services, including film shoots, wide load and other vehicle escorts, crane operations, traffic signal maintenance, road closures and building sites. They also include crowd and traffic control, uh, public order for events such as sporting and entertainment events, including fairs, film and stage premieres, exhibitions, music festivals and agricultural shows, whether at closed venues or stadiums, or open events such as road cycling events and fun runs, or outdoor concerts. There are also supplementary policing services where a, a client requests additional policing services in a designated location, like markets or commercial shopping centres. The services provided by police officers who would not otherwise be rostered on for duty, Mr Deputy President, as was the case here. In these circumstances, New South Wales Police apply a user charge arrangement, which is a statutory scheme to recover the cost of providing these policing services. On the 7th of September, police from the Sydney City Police Area Command engaged initially with the Independent Convention Centre in relation to Mr Farage's event and a number of other events scheduled at the ICC as part of its ongoing business. The event involving Mr Farage 
attracted some concern around the prospects of potential protests. The discussions with the venue included the provision of user charges police. Due to low ticket sales for the Nigel Farage event, organisers moved it to Dalton House. Ultimately, police and the promoter agreed to the provision of four user charges police. In addition, a further 25 rostered officers were tasked to the event. In terms of upfront payment, I'm advised that the promoter is a first-time client. In such cases, as is customary, payment is sought prior to the conduct of the event. This agreement was in accordance with policy in the legislative framework under which the New South Wales Police can request payment for user charges services. That having been said, Mr Deputy President, we won't be opposing the motion. Further speakers, the Honourable Tara Moriarty. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. The opposition, opposition does not oppose the motion. Further speakers, the, the Honourable Mark Latham in reply. I thank you, Deputy President. Well, thank goodness we had our own Inspector Gadget hey? on the job to explain what happened that night. Go, go, uh, efficient, uh, diligent, finely cut and trimmed up to the task. Uh, the Honourable Ben Franklin, uh, as ever, reading out the notes written for him. <laughs> for him. Now, we've got to correct him on a couple of fronts. Uh, <laughs> this wasn't a question of traffic management. The whole proposition there is was absurd. There was no cycling. Uh, this was a speaking event where the organisers were coerced into paying the $3,000 because they were told they were told if they didn't pay the money, the police would call off the event. Hey, Mark. So why would... Why would... Well, I'll acknowledge the interjection. <laughs> assure the honourable member that One Nation is a very broad uh, church. Uh, One Nation is often fitted up by um, uh, the left of politics as we're terrible misogynists and, and women haters, but we love all women. I can assure the honourable member that at that event and elsewhere, we love all women and we love all men. We are a party of love and devotion to every citizen in New South Wales. And in this particular case, we're devoted to saving the taxpayers' money. We're devoted to saving the taxpayers' money because no one should be coerced into, uh, into paying $3,000 when there are no protesters, when the government's best line is that somehow it was a cycling event or they needed some traffic management down there in Piermont. The whole proposition is absurd and there was a waste of policing resources. We do need to see the document. And as much as we love and respect our own little Inspector Gadget here and the report he's given the House, it was insufficient and we will need to persevere with the SO52 to get the full documentation and we'll see what we've got to say about it subsequently. <laughs> The Honourable Mark Latham has moved private members' business item 2015 relating to SO52 Nigel Farage speaking event. I will put uh, the question, all those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. <laughs> the ayes have it. Clark <laughs> will read the order of the day. <laughs> 